is let's finish stylizing our HTML5 tags with floats from the from the class tags and also rounded corners from the class tags, all kinds of cool stuff and flexibility we can create with class tags applied to the HTML5 tag. So again, vocabulary here is important. Okay, classes are defined first and they're assigned, unlike putting the code inside of a div tag or a code inside of the header tag, nav tag, HTML5 tag, that's a permanent thing. Flexibility is created with class tags. Class tags are used to create flexibility for responsive web development for mobile apps and also desktop or laptop. Okay, so let's continue. So a side tag, so the aside tag is gonna be 150 pixels wide and it's gonna flow to the left. So our, our header tag, Basically, the container div tag, if we double click that, the container div tag was 80%. This is 80% of the entire tag. Okay, so if it's 80%, we can make the aside tag also a percentage. We can make the aside tag the percentage of the 80s, 80%. So we're going to select the tag. We're going to select the aside tag here at the bottom left, select the tag, and make a rule. In order to affect the tag, we need to select the tag. Nothing happens with software unless you select something. So we're going to make new CSS rule. So again, let's just say a side period, not a side specifically. Either way, it's going to work. I just don't want it to be written that way. I just want to write it with the aside tag. So a side tag is going to be, box is going to be, let's make this box be 20% wide. So 20% for the aside tag. Now, we're not going to float it here. We want to create flexibility. So we're going to create the flexibility inside of a class tag. We're going to hit OK. So here's the aside tag at 20%. Now, we can assign multiple colors to this. But first, let's float this to the left. How do we float the tag to the left? First of all, we put our cursor here, we select the tag. We select the tag, we want to affect the tag, we select the tag. Then we're gonna come down here to class and based on these choices, these choices, we're gonna float this to the left. So that's simply a left float. Simple, 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 okay? Now, we wanna give, and this is something you wanna pay attention to here, Okay, we want to get the aside tag a color, right? So very important step here. The way that menus work, menus are either or. Menus are not this and that. So as an example, if you pick a color here, so if I pick this, uh, this BG1 color here for my aside tag, it's going to kill the float because that's not how menus work. Menus are either or. Menus are not this and that. So how can we assign a class tag to this plus the color tag? Very simply, we select the tag, we go to our code. Now, if you watched my previous videos, I typically don't show a lot of code because most things can be done inside the CSS WYSIWYG environment. However, this is a very simple technique here. We can just select the tag first. Now, the reason I selected the tag, because when I go to my code, it will select that particular tag. So here it's my original class tag, which is left float. So I'm gonna click right here inside the quotation marks. So I selected left float. Now, if I simply, 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 simply hit the space bar, space bar, up pops my available classes in here. Now, very important production technique. Why did I call it BG1, BG2? BG3. Well, first of all, you can start out a class name with a number. So if you want to make this background one as an example, in this particular case, I get it to the return key. But if you want it BG5, you can just say BG5 and hit return key. So in this particular case, I just want to be BG1, hit the return key. So in addition to the left float, I've assigned a BG1. One, so it's a class plus a float. Class plus a float, little production technique here. 
control tilde symbol. The tilde symbol is to the left of your one key. You can toggle by hitting the control key, Macintosh, control key, control tilde toggles between design mode and code mode. Design mode, code mode, control tilde symbol, which is the left of the one key. Make a change, save a change. So now this has both, this has both a float plus it has a color. Very cool technique here. It has a float plus a color. So now we're going to select the section tag. Now keep in mind the section tag contains article tag. By default, the section tag is taking up this entire space here. So we're going to float the section tag to the left as well. Now we could float the section tag to the right because they're right next to each other. But we're going to keep it simple. So we're going to select the tag, select the section tag, and down here to the bottom right, make a rule. Make a rule, select the tag, select the tag, make a rule. Simple, simple, simple. Every single one of my videos shares the same simple technique. Select the tag, make a rule. It writes the rule for you. Okay, so I'm going to say less specific. I'm going to go to section, and section, well, if my aside tag was 20%, then this is going to be 80%. Okay, and I hit OK. So nothing happens right now because I haven't floated this and I haven't assigned a color to it. So let's use the same color we used for header, which is background 2. So we're going to select the tag, and first of all, we're going to assign the class called left, left float. So there is the section tag. Now, in addition to that left float, as I just got done explaining, you can assign multiple choices with your menu. You have to go to your code for that. So I pre-select the tag. I pre-select the tag. I hit the control tilde symbol, or if it's simpler for you, to go to code view. And I'm going to put my cursor right here, right after the word left float. Okay, then I space bar and we want to make this BG3. So I can just type in BG3. Turn key, control tilde, or I can click design mode. Okay, actually I meant to make a bit header color, didn't I? So the header color was BG2. So simple, simple, simple. Let's select this. Let's go back to our code and change the 3 to A2. Because if we can give it this abstract name, I call this something very simple. BG1, BG2, BG3, etc., etc., etc. So it's a good habit to get into. Okay. Now we have to do the footer tag. Now the footer tag, because I want to make this be flexible. Keep in mind that my container div, double click, my container div doesn't have a height. I want the container div to wrap around all the content. So the only way that's going to happen is if the, fo the footer has a clear associated to it. Right now the footer has no rules. We have no rules for the footer. So we're going to say select the tag, select the footer tag, and make a rule. Make a rule for the footer tag. Now we're going to do something a little different here. Footer tag is going to be a smaller typeface. So we're going to say font size is going to be 10 pixels. Then I want the footer to vertically top and bottom, vertically top and bottom in the center. So a little production technique here, a little trick here. I'm going to make the footer height 30 pixels high for the line height, not the box height. If you change the box height, then you're going to have problems with this. Okay, Box height is going to jam the type on the top of the box. We don't want to do that. Okay, So in this particular case, we're going to make the line height X amount. In addition to that, under category of block, we want to horizontally align the type to the center. So if I have the apply option right now, I want to horizontally align it and top and bottom align it. So now I can apply a color to this. Now let's think about this. It's not very common that we're going to change our footer. So in this particular case, I'm going to keep my footer to black. I want my footer black content. So background color, I'm going to physically change the color inside the div tag, I'm sorry, inside the footer tag itself to black, which means I want my type to be white. Because by default, it defaults to black. And guess what? 
you can't see black type on a black background. Okay, so footer is taking up this entire space up in here because footer doesn't understand these floats. So footer by default, first of all, footer should be at the bottom. So I'm going to drag footer to the bottom. Then it should be followed by header, followed by nav, followed by a side, followed by section. So footer, double click, double click footer. We're going to go back to our footer and we're going to say based on these choices, these are my choices for my box right now. Again, very important to understand. The footer needs to clear both these two left floats. The footer needs to clear these left floats. Now, to create flexibility for a design, because eventually on, say, the products page, I can decide with a class tag, I can decide to have a side float to the right. So based on these choices, we want to create flexibility. We're going to say footer clear both. Clear both left, clear both right. So if I hit the apply option right now, you'll see that footer tag ends at the bottom. Okay, so we'll finish this up in our next video. In fact, let's actually do some rounded corners now. We're going to start to build our rounded corners and we'll finish the rounded corners in our next video. So let's take this file, save as, let's save this as version 4. So file, save as 4. Okay, so now I happen to have a little free plugin that enables me to put text inside the box here. If you go to the Dreamweaver Exchange, you can put dummy text. But short of that, we're going to simply go to Firefox, we're gonna go to Google, and we're going to type in IPSUM. So that's going to take us to this website link. We're going to click this website link. We're going to go down here and generate five paragraphs by selecting generate five paragraphs. So we're going to take some of this content here and we're going to copy and paste. So copy, command C, control C, go back to Dreamweaver. We're going to double click article and we're going to paste. Now I just did that to get some content in here. Now we're also going to make a rule for article. Article doesn't have a rule at this point. We're going to make one in just a second. Okay, so also going to take some of this. Now for the header, a little, little self-promotion here, we're going to put in think, earn, earn com. And we want to make this a header tag. So command key one, control one, Windows makes us a header tag. Now, that's a little too big for my taste. We're going to fix that in just a second. Next, we're going to hit the return key, and I'm going to put the tagline to think the way the software thinks. Now, did I have typos in here? Yes, I do. T-H-I-N-K. I'm a two-finger typist. Software thinks dot, dot, dot. I'm a big dot, dot, dot fan. So we're going to make this header two, command two. Okay. Now, this looks really awful. We're going to change it in just a second. So we're going to create a rule for H1 when H1 is inside of header. We're going to create a rule for H2 when H2 is inside of header. Because we already have rules generically for the entire site. So we can create a rule specifically for the header tag when header tag is inside of H1 and when header tag is inside of H2. We're going to do that in our next video. For this video, we're going to give this box here a rounded corner. We're going to give the section a rounded corner. Here's the simplest, 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 simplest way to do that. Now, we already have a rounded, I'm sorry, we already have a section rule. We have a section rule. So we're going to double click the section rule. Double click. Okay. Now, very important step here. No place in here is a section for rounded corners. That's not how Dreamweaver works. So what I need to do is, in order to affect that rule, I need to select that rule. So I've selected the rule. Then I'm going to say add property. Now pay close attention to this because it's very simple to make a mistake on this. This is my own technique for this. It works 
seamlessly. We're going to select Add Property. We're not going to type into this box. Instead, we're going to click right here, Pop-up Menu. With Menu popped up, we're simply going to type B-O-R-D-E-R hyphen R, Border Radius, B-O-R Border hyphen Radius. Select the menu. Don't select inside the type box. It's not going to help you. Then I get to hit the return key. Now, because I'm using Dreamweaver CS 5.5, it gives me this little icon here. CS 5 doesn't have this little icon. CS 5.5 does. So I can simply click this based on these choices. We're going to give this 12 pixels of space, 12 pixels of rounded corner. Okay, so if I move this out of the way here and I make a change, save a change, you'll see that you can't see the rounded corner because you can only see the rounded corner if you either publish it to a server or you go to live view. Live view. So if I go to live view, I can see that this has a rounded corner. Now, the problem here is that I want to separate this a little bit from nav section. I'm going to deselect that, take that off. I'm going to click back in here and give this more of a dramatic rounded corner so you can actually see this a little better. I'm going to put in 24 pixels of rounded corner. I'm going to double click section and I'm going to say section from the top of the section. Margin space is from the top. Sorry, margin space is outside the box. Padding space is inside the box. So from the top and the bottom, I want to put some space here. So from the top, inside the box itself, I'm going to say 1M space. And from the bottom, inside the box itself, I'm going to say 0.6M spacing. Okay, for the margin space for the top, again, margin space is outside of the box. Padding space is inside the box. So margin space from the top, 1M space. So if I hit my apply option right now, you'll see that here's my space. Here's my space from the top. So we're just doing this in this particular case, top and bottom. Okay, so now when I hit save and I go back to live view, you can see I have a rounded corner. We're gonna fix this tied up type up as well in our next video, but I just want to share with you how simple it is to do a rounded corner. So in our next video, we're gonna round corner some other HTML tags plus rounded corners for, uh, I'm sorry, plus drop shadows, plus uh, text shadows for the text, all using CSS3 and HTML5. So stay tuned.